wanted to talk about this story I found on Reddit on unsolved murders. 23-year-old Karen Denise Wells vanished under mysterious circumstances on April 12, 1994, while on a road trip to visit a friend. Her abandoned rental car was found the next day with the doors open, an empty gas tank, and a dead battery. There was no sign of the missing woman anywhere. In April 1994, 23-year-old Denise Wells drove across the country with the intention of visiting a friend who was going through a rough time, yet she never made it to her destination. After checking into a motel in Middlesex Township, Pennsylvania, the sleep-deprived Denise said that she planned to go out to eat and then go back to her room to sleep. This was the last time anyone ever heard from her. The next morning, a chilling discovery was made. Denise's rental car was found abandoned on a desolate stretch of road 35 miles from the hotel, with the doors open, an empty gas tank, and a dead battery. There was no sign of Denise anywhere. What happened to Denise? Karen Denise Wells, who went by her middle name, Denise, was born September the 22nd, 1970 in Oklahoma. Growing up, Denise was a kind and curious child who was close to her family. But as a teenager, she fell in with the wrong crowd. She created tension in the relationship with her parents and she began to drink and her grades suffered. She moved to South Dakota where she lived with an aunt. During her time there, she was convicted of check forgery and put on probation. No one is really sure why she chose to commit this crime. There's no details available. Eventually, she returned to Oklahoma and revealed to her family that she was pregnant. At that point, it appears that the father of the baby was already out of the picture. She gave birth to a son whom she named William Blake. By all accounts, Denise was a devoted mother who dearly loved her baby. In an attempt to get her life together, the single mother secured a job at the airport, Haskell Airport. However, early on in her time there, she began having a relationship with her married boss, Michael. Denise received a phone call in April from a 24-year-old friend named Melissa Shepard. The two had gone to high school together, and Melissa had moved to New Jersey and was going through a rough time. She allegedly had a problem with drug abuse and was claiming to be suicidal. Denise felt that Melissa needed her help, and she decided that she would drive out to see her in New Jersey. This was a 1,400-mile drive. She dropped off her 14-month-old baby with her parents on April the 10th, telling them that she would be back in four or five days. She then rented a white 1993 Plymouth Acclaim and left Haskell, Oklahoma that night. The two women were in contact throughout Denise's journey, but as Melissa would later explain, this was merely because Denise became lost multiple times and needed direction. On April the 12th, Denise reached Middlesex Township, Pennsylvania, and checked into Pike Motel at 5.45 p.m. She told the owner at the front desk that she simply wanted to take a nap and only needed the room for a couple of hours. Within an hour or so of arriving at the hotel, Melissa called her four separate times at 5.59 6.06, 6.13, and again at 6.59 p.m. At 6.30 p.m., Denise returned to the front desk and asked for a book of matches, which she was given. After that interaction, the hotel owner and her husband said they never saw Denise again. Sometime around 7 p.m., Melissa, the friend, called the 
the hotel and asked for directions. She said she had planned to drive there that night and have Denise follow her back to New Jersey so that she wouldn't get lost again. At just after 8 p.m., the two friends spoke again for the last time. According to Melissa, Denise stated that she was hungry and that she was going to go get something to eat at a McDonald's before she went to sleep. She would never be seen or heard from again. Melissa Shepard showed up at the Pike Motel around midnight. She told police that she and her boyfriend made the trip together, but this turned out to be a lie. She told the police that it was just the two of them, but it turned out that there was actually another man with them. She actually had brought another man whom she described as being a casual friend from a bar where she worked. Why she felt the need to leave this out to the police or why she felt the need to bring this man along with them on this road trip was never explained. Maybe she was going to have one of them drive the car back so that um, her friend wouldn't get lost again, but... Additionally, there were other discrepancies in her version of events. When they pulled into the parking lot and discovered that Denise's car was not there, Melissa immediately went ballistic, according to the men. Melissa claimed that it was only when an employee gave her access to Denise's room that she saw the state that it was in and began to panic. Regardless, Melissa reported Denise missing at 1 a.m. The police didn't find anything particularly strange about the condition of the motel room. It was in good shape, they said. There were no signs of a struggle or forced entry. Her suitcase was open on the bed and some of the clothing were laying out on the bed. Her room key was there as well. Now, why would she have left her room key in the room if she was going to leave to go to McDonald's and then come back, probably get the food and bring it back to the motel to eat it. A pack of cigarettes and a magazine sat on the bedside table. The only odd thing about the room was that they found a cigarette in the ashtray that appeared to have been lit but not smoked. Apparently he had burned out on its own. This sounds almost to me like this woman was in her room, had lit a cigarette, maybe someone came and knocked on the door so she put the cigarette in the ice tray, got up to go over to open the door, and something happened there at that door. It seems almost like someone grabbed her and pulled her from the room, closing the door behind her, possibly. So now we get to this part of the story. At 5.30 a.m. the next morning, a motorist found Denise's rental car abandoned on a stretch of highway on Route 274 near the Tuscarora State Park, of around 35 miles away from the hotel. The road is bordered by dense woods. It was an eerie scene. Both of the vehicle's front doors had been left wide open and the hazard lights were switched on, but the battery was dead and the gas tank was empty. The car was also scratched and splattered with mud. But this, this led to the police and others to believe that the car had been driven off the main road and inside, investigators found remnants of a Hardee's meal empty soda bottles, some maps, and a pair of shoes. Melissa, who described Denise as being like a sister to her, said that she never drank or did drugs, yet her two male companions told a different story. According to them, when they couldn't find Denise in the room that night, the first course of action taken by the three of them was to look for her in the local bars. Denise's purse, containing $13.71, was located in a ditch nearby. 
To this day, the keys to the Plymouth have never been found. A businessman came forward to report having seen a woman matching Denise's description walking along the side of the road in Shafferstown, Pennsylvania, at around 11.30 a.m. on the morning that she went missing, April the 12th. As it turned out, she needed assistance because she was out of gas. After the man helped her, she asked him for directions, telling him that she'd been to New Jersey and was on her way back to Oklahoma. Had Denise already been to New Jersey? And if so, what happened? Investigators learned that the odometer of her rental car displayed an extra six to 700 miles that couldn't be accounted for from where it was located. Additionally, phone records showed that Denise had placed a call to Melissa from Shafferstown at 11.40 that day. This led uh, credence to the businessman's story. In another bizarre twist, police discovered that a phone call had been made to Melissa from a Sheets payphone in Middlesex Township 17 hours before Denise arrived. It went to voicemail. When questioned about it, Melissa, who told investigators that she had no connection to the, anyone in that area, said she couldn't remember anything about a call or who called her. An extensive search of the area was carried out by police and volunteers on foot, horseback, and all-terrain vehicles, but no trace of the woman was ever found. It's important to note that Melissa Shepard was never named as a suspect in Denise's disappearance. Calls came in from around the state to report sightings of Denise, but none of them were ever substantiated. In addition to the items also discovered was Denise's birth certificate, her driver's license, probation card, a small amount of marijuana and a pipe, and what was believed to have been cocaine, even though it was never made clear if that was what it was. Something that I question is they said that the friend, Melissa Shepard, was a club dancer. I'm assuming that, they're, that they mean that she was a stripper. I'm not sure about that, but could it be that she invited Curran, Denise Wells, to come to where she was at to dance? Could that be the reason why she had her birth certificate with her? Um with the promise of a, a, a large paycheck. Maybe she told her they need girls to come and dance. It's a one-time thing. You'll get paid, you know, you'll get paid very well. You can make a lot of money and go back home with this money. Could that be what lured Karen Denise Wells to go visit this friend? Maybe it had nothing whatsoever to do with her being in distress or going through hard times and just needing a friend. These men that accompanied her, one of them she described as an acquaintance from the club where she worked or the bar, uh, could he have been more than just that? Maybe this woman got sold into some type of trafficking. It's possible. Her belongings were all just left behind. Her purse was found in a ditch with about $13 inside. Um, I, don't th I don't think that this was a random stranger pickup. I don't think she wandered off into the woods and became lost and disoriented. I believe that someone came to the hotel that night, met her at the door. That's the reason why the cigarette was still burning in the ice tray and had burnt out without having been smoked. Um, the, she, she told this man that she had already been to New Jersey. Could it be that she had gone ahead on into New Jersey, met up with these people, found out what it was that they really wanted her to do, and decided she was getting out of there, and they came after her? Could that be why this um, Melissa was really there at the hotel and reported her missing? had nothing whatsoever to do with her needing someone to follow her or to drive, drive her there.
this is just something that I questioned and wondered about, wondered what other people thought about that. Because she told this man that this man said that he picked her up. She told him she'd run out of gas. He helped her. She told him she'd already been to New Jersey and was on her way back to Oklahoma. So I believe that she went to this hotel after she'd already been to New Jersey. She went to this hotel. She told this hotel uh, manager that she was only going to be there for a couple of hours. And I believe that they followed her back there. That's, that's a theory. Authorities received another lead that defied explanation. The wife of Denise's married boyfriend contacted the police to tell them that Denise had called their home around Thanksgiving of 1994. This was several months after she vanished. She said, tell Mike I'm not coming home. I'm already married. Investigators were unsure of what to make of this. While they didn't believe that Denise had actually made the call herself, it was possible that someone else had called posing as her. Or was it possible that she didn't call at all and that nobody called at all and that this was made up to um, throw police off of the scent of someone who might have a reason to want this woman to disappear? Detectives visited Melissa in New Jersey multiple times to question her. She was initially cooperative, but eventually she refused to answer any more questions, explaining that she wanted to get on with her life and put this behind her. Now it goes on to say that Melissa later had some more unrelated legal problems. The police also in, interviewed multiple other individuals whose names haven't been released to the public, but they do believe that some people were withholding information. Denise's family struggled to come to terms with her disappearance and continued to hope the answers would come forward. They knew that, they would that she would never willingly leave her son behind. Well, I have to ask the question, why would this woman who had a one-and-a-half-year-old baby just up and leave him with her family to drive all the way across the country to a woman to go visit a woman who she said was having some struggles? Was there more to this? Did her family try to talk her out of taking this trip? Did they think this was a bad idea? I do call the police from time to time. I do try to block it out and enjoy what's left of my family, said her mother. William was raised by his grandparents. He never knew what happened to his mom, and this was really hard on him growing up, said his grandmother. Someone knows what happened to Denise, and hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it, said Trooper John Boardman. Both the Wells family and authorities firmly believe that foul play was behind its disappearance. They do believe that this was drug-related. Well, they found a little bit of marijuana and what they thought was possibly cocaine, a, a small amount, not... It, I mean, did they believe that this woman was involved in some type of drug smuggling or involved with some big operator? Um, it doesn't really sound like that who was responsible for the disappearance of Denise, her friend Melissa, and the two men involved because their stories didn't add up. She fell, she fell victim to a random stranger in an area that she was not familiar with. Something accidental happened, and someone hid her body, or a boyfriend or significant other had something to do with it. Um... This businessman that came forward and claimed that he helped her and talked to her that morning, was he investigated? Um, did he say where he left her? Was she walking back toward the car? Did he take her back to the car and drop her back off at the car? Um, 
I would say that it could be possible that she fell victim to a random stranger, but the fact that her friends claim that they did drive to the hotel, went into the hotel room, I think that was what was really what happened here. This was dated January of 2021, Panama City, Florida. A man was arrested in connection with a string of burglaries and thefts in the area. Okay, so here we go. This is the connection to this story. This is the friend, and the, I don't know if these other men involved in this were part of that same group that supposedly went to the hotel that night. Panama City police say they arrested a man in connection with a string of burglaries and thefts and four other people they believe were in on it. Police say investigators were following leads into a burglary of an electrical contractor in Panama City. More victims came forward and claimed that they had been victims of a robbery. 19 arrest warrants were issued and um, they found a flatbed truck found at a condominium complex. And it was believed that it was used to commit crimes of burglary and theft of an ATM in Panama Beach. Also arrested were Scott Hill, Melissa Shepard, April Tool, and Naeem Muhammad. So this Melissa Shepard was part of this. This was many years later, but it shows that she may have been involved in some criminal activity throughout her life. This is from Uncovered. I'll read this. Karen was a beloved mother who was taking a well-deserved trip out of town. She had made plans to visit her friend Melissa Shepard in New Jersey. That was a long drive from Oklahoma, but the family was confident that she could make the trip, as she had driven to South Dakota by herself several times. She embarked on a cross-country trip from Oklahoma and called her friend periodically as she got closer. She encountered some trouble along the way. She had driven miles past the route to turn off to go toward New Jersey, and had asked for help when she ran out of gas on the main road. She managed to double back to Carlisle, Pennsylvania and checked into a motel room. She had made a series of phone calls to her friend and the conversation ended by Melissa saying that she would just come to the hotel and let her follow her back so they didn't have to keep getting lost. Melissa reported Karen missing the next day. When she arrived at her hotel room and there was no sign of her. Her suitcase and belongings were in the room, but hours later, her rental car was found abandoned on a stretch of road 35 miles away. Now, this is where the police noticed that there was an extra 700 miles of, on the odometer. So they wonder, had she driven to New Jersey Something may have happened when she got there and she turned around to leave and maybe these people followed her. But she had been at the hotel earlier that day, the, the people that said she rented the hotel room and she had come into the office and spoke to them. Melissa was 23 at the time she disappeared. She would be 53 today. She had blonde hair. She was five foot six and about 115 pounds. She was a white female. And if you have any information about her disappearance, you can contact 1 800 634 4097. I'll wrap up this video by saying that it's my personal opinion that this young woman fell victim to these predators. I believe that they set her up to come to New Jersey. I believe that this woman was a career criminal, this friend of hers. I don't know if this um, young woman went there knowing that she was going there um, to get involved in uh, dancing. 
I, I, I believe that because I believe that's the reason why she had her birth certificate with her. I think she was promised something, um, a job of some sort that she thought she was going to make some money. And I believe that that's the reason why she did bring her birth certificate. I believe that either she was murdered that night or she was taken to New Jersey and murdered or it's possible that she was um, sold into or become indentured in some way with some type of um, sex trafficking or something of that nature. It may have been drugs. Um, it's it's horrible to think about that this young woman told this man that helped her that morning that she was on her way back to Oklahoma. And I think she possibly was going to try to go back to her family and just didn't make it. She just didn't get away from these people in time. And that's, that's my own personal opinion. I don't know what the police came up with their own theories, but I do believe that this Melissa Shepard knows something. I, I know she does. I know she knows what really went on. And I don't know if she'll ever talk, but um, if anything else new about this story ever comes out, I will do a follow-up. Thanks for watching.